Okay, I believe, Jane, we are live. Excellent. All right. Hey, yeah. Ellie. Hey, how are you, Jane? <laughs> I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I was going to be um, Tiffany Haddish this morning. She showed up for an interview on CBS this morning. She was wearing her pajamas and those things under her eyes. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> like onesie pajamas and a little thing in those. Anyway, it's great. But no, I got dressed. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that because uh, where Jane is, it is uh, in California. So it's seven o'clock in the morning. So I do really appreciate you being here with us. So thank you. No problem. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to make sure that I can see us so that, yeah, I can see us. And I'm going to, um, yeah, make sure I can find, see the comments because um, if there are questions, folks, you can happy to answer them. Okay, so yep, good morning. I see Victoria's here, Arlene's here, Mickey's here. Lots of folks are here. Yay. Ah, good. Folks Mickey's here, so we won't fall apart. Good. Exactly. <laughs> well, precisely. You were saying earlier how organized my website is. Yeah, that there. My, my, my being organized is all Mickey. It's great. <laughs> she sends me, um, where is it? She sends me lists of things to do. She'll be like, here are our meeting notes. This is what you promised to do. I'm like, okay, I'll go do that. Oh, wow. Oh, she's fantastic. I mean, you keep raving about her, but clearly she's over the top. Fantastic. Good. She's so yeah. good. Hopefully you'll get yeah. to meet her one day. I'm hoping that. Uh, yes. Oh, you know, yeah. That we will get yeah, to. And maybe her. meet you in person one day too. <laughs> well, that'll be nice. Because <laughs> we've been um, connected online for quite a long time I think I think so yeah a number yeah. Of, quite a few years so I remember taking yeah. your um class gosh five or six years ago I don't even know oh, how long wow. ago yes. yeah anyway. yeah all right well so um I'm just waiting for everyone to hop on um we'll just wait a couple minutes before we dive so into the meat and potatoes of the interview but um I'm just checking the comments it seems like people can hear and see us okay so that's good okay um and, and you know in california we'd say that granola in other words the nuts and flakes of <laughs> the nuts and flakes <laughs> old joke but <laughs> you're funny um so for those of you just arriving welcome welcome this is our thursday morning facebook live um in a few minutes i will start um a fun chat with Jane Lafazio, an amazing mixed media artist who I've been wanted to have come on for ages. Um, just a quick um, public announcement. I uh, wanted to welcome all the new club members to um, and to thank everybody for taking the five day challenge because that was a lot of fun. And oh, to yes. remember that we still have our monthly um, tea challenge. So um, you have until the end of the month to enter the tea challenge. So make a book related to tea, you know tea dyed paper, tea bag book, tea sh teacup shape, but I don't really care what it's about, just um, about tea. And um, if you enter it in the, um, the Google form, which Mickey will drop into the comments for me, um, you will be entered to win a sort of package of my um, sample goodies this month. So it will include, well, not this, actually it won't include this book. It'll include the vintage book that I did um, and a whole bunch of samples and all sorts of things. So I would love to give that away to someone. So make sure you enter the tea challenge, folks. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Annette. Good morning, Celeste. Good morning, Mandy. Oh, hi, everybody. Okay, Miss, Mrs. Jane Lafarcio, it's so nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Allie, for inviting me. I'm a big you. admirer of yours and all you've created in cyberspace <laughs> this last year. <laughs> well, the, the feeling is mutual. We've been following you for years. And, um, but for those folks who don't know you, which I don't know if anyone does it here, but for those folks who don't know you, why don't you... Um, because I know you started out life <laughs> as something else. I'd like to know how you came to um, just creating, how, what your sort of creative journey looked like, how it began. Like, how did you begin creating? Because I'm not sure you grew up kind of creating things. Well, um, my earliest influence was my dad. Uh, mm -hmm. My parents were divorced and I'd go to San Francisco once a month to see him. And not only would he take me to museums and the theater and, and outdoor art fairs and hate Ashbury back in the day, mm -hmm. um, he was very creative. He was a chef, but he also in his kitchen had a card table and on the card table were pipe cleaners and crepe paper and glitter. And we <laughs> would make stuff. Seriously. And, seriously. And each 
each holiday, major holiday, he would make something for me. Um, and I would take it home on the train. And these some things were like, in my childhood mind, giant Easter eggs made out of crepe paper that opened up and were full of candy or a big crepe paper Christmas tree. And what I remember is the train conductor saying to me, little girl, do you have a ticket for that? So <laughs> they must they must have been large, but my mom never took a single picture. I have no idea what they look like. Oh, but <laughs> so he was that influence on me. Well, my mom was a single working mother yeah. and her influence was if I was doing something creative, she would not interrupt me to go and do chores. Ooh, so she, yes. Yeah. So she encouraged it subtly. Um, so anyway, so I was a, a creative kid, but I wasn't the artist kid, you know, sure. um, I made flagpoles out of broomsticks for the backyard. <laughs> you know, just, <laughs> I drew on my walls and, you know, crazy stuff like that. Um, yeah. um, so then I went on to be, you know, as you recently read on my website, a flight attendant, because yep. tr I just love to travel and that's you yeah. know, really what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and it was international airline, so I was able to go all over the world right mm -hmm. away, um, which is great. Yeah. And then, okay, fast forward. Um, How many years? <laughs> <laughs> um, got married, airline went on strike, had to go back to school and was like, what am I going to go to school for? Because, you know, my whole, I was all geared towards being a flight attendant. Yeah. And. I said to my husband, I said, I think I'll take some secretarial skills, you know, stenography, filing. And he's like, let's rethink this. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a personnel manager. And he said, let's rethink this. You like to work with your hands. Why don't you take something art related? Ooh. So I signed up for fine art and that was over my head and immediately went into graphic design. So got a degree in graphic design. Yeah. Um, Still didn't think I could draw, even though I look back at my homework from school and I could. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's all in your head. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so I went on to be a technical illustrator for a number of years and then that morphed into marketing. Yeah. Um, and then in 1992, my hmm. wonderful husband had a brain aneurysm. And he what? was just 47. And I was 42 and he had to learn to read and write and walk and talk all over again. And um, yeah. it was awful, as you can imagine. Yeah. And so during that time, I was like any caregiver, losing mm -hmm. the Jane, mm -hmm. completely immersed in, in yeah. his care. So a friend suggested I take an art class. So I signed up for an art class on a Tuesday morning mm -hmm. and it was a drawing class with pencil. Yeah. And it was in that class that I realized that drawing is all about sitting still, looking at the object and focusing and drawing what you see, not what you think you see. And it was a turning point for me, not only in my sanity, because I could be Jane during the class, and, right. you know, <laughs> not caregiver. Yeah. And um, it, it was just, it was, and then being in your right brain versus your left brain. Mm -hmm. was just a huge gift yeah I and bet. so that teacher moved away and a watercolor teacher moved in and I was like I don't want to do watercolor but <laughs> I only had Tuesday mornings resistance <laughs> yes and and you know life's paths you know yeah yeah, yeah. so I bought the primary colors because that's all I could afford and that's why I'm very good at mixing color and then went on to be so I'm working full-time this whole time yeah. Um, went on to be a watercolor artist while I was working. I started um, showing my work and doing art fairs and with this group of artists, learning how to put on receptions and send invitations and, and yeah. pricing and all those things that yeah. a professional working artist needs to be. Yeah. And then um, in 1998, got laid off from my job. Okay. Yep. So I said to my husband, I think we can pay the mortgage for six months. I'm going to try to be a full-time artist. And that was 20 something years ago. Wow. So, <laughs> so 
There you go. And I, you know, I started out as an artist showing my work in galleries, trying to get in galleries and, and art sure. fairs. And then the internet came along. <laughs> so <laughs> I started, I started teaching again, you know, mm. I'm not a teacher. I don't want to teach. Resistance. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah but I started teaching kids first, which was really fun. I don't like kids, but I love teaching them. <laughs> I mean, I say that <laughs> facetiously. I yeah. didn't want kids of my own, but I love being around them for, you know, an hour or two and sure. encouraging their creativity and yeah. not cleaning up after them. So oh, yeah, that's even better. <laughs> and then not to make dinner for them and put them to bed. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Um, and then went on to teaching adults, which I really, really love. Yeah. You know, yeah. And then the travel piece came in, which brought it all together, traveling and teaching. It like came full circle, but let's just go back. So you started yes. out, you did the drawing and then you were a watercolor artist. But then I think when I first saw you, you were doing art quilts. So how come, so where did the art quilts come in? Cause that was my first exposure to you. Yeah, um, I was in doing the watercolors, I was stitching on the paper, hand stitching on the paper for oh. the texture and the mixed media aspect. And then I, I remember I got this commission with a short deadline. So I was cutting up old paintings into pieces and sewing them on the new paintings. Ah, and so I was, you know, very, because um, I'd always done well, backing up, I'd always done some kind of stitching, like counted cross stitch and needlepoint and cruel work. I'd always done that since I was 16. Yeah. So yeah. stitching on paper. Yeah. And then I read, so I'm, you know, stitching away. And then I read an article in Somerset Studio that about art quilts and that you could stitch on fabric. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> who knew? <laughs> who knew? <laughs> so I made these fabric. little art quilts, just tearing the fabric and stitching. Yeah. and submitted them and they were I became a featured artist in their in their book Material Visions yeah with my yeah, first I art remember. quilt yeah that that's so funny though it's like you started stitching on the because normally it's the other way around people normally start out as quilters and then transition yeah to paper. yeah, yeah. so it's been great again for my career and teaching in retreats and you know just because I can do mm sketching a watercolor and art quilts and mixed media and it's really made it great for, yeah. for teaching in my career as I said huh interesting so yeah. talk to me a little bit about um the teaching because it's interesting that the travel came full circle you know you you, you were your flight attendant and you know you did the travel and then you went transitioned to art and then it all kind of came together with yeah. you um traveling and teaching and doing these retreats so like how did that even start was it intentional or was it again some resistance and then it just you just kind of gave in and it kind of blossomed well it wasn't nothing <laughs> business plan huh no, no. no not a business, no, no plan um I was well briefly so I got invited to be in cloth paper scissors magazine by right. the wonderful Leslie Riley yeah and that opened up so much. That opened up Quilting Arts Magazine. That opened up all the retreats they were doing. That opened up my friendship with Pokey Bolton. Mm -hmm. um, and so I began creating, I mean, I was teaching here in San Diego, but oh. then creating one day workshops and going to Chicago and Seattle with those art retreats. Gotcha. So I got known on a national basis. Right. And then, um, I think it was, I think, anyway, it doesn't matter. I was teaching and somebody told somebody else about me and I got an email that said, would you be interested in teaching in Italy? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, how many seconds did you wait? <laughs> no, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> so that was my first international. That was in Orvieto. And I, I did that twice. Yeah. And then, then I got another email from my friend Carlo and she well, she wasn't my friend. I didn't know her. She sure. said, somebody in yoga told me about you. Would you like to, you know, teach on the French Riviera? <laughs> How like, long did it take for you to answer that one? <laughs> yes, I wrote back, yes, yes, yes. So they, they just came out of every time I've taught it internationally, um, especially it's been someone's come to me and which has been fantastic. 
Oh, that's amazing. And so these people, they organized the retreat. So you didn't even have to organize. Good grief. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Wow. Every single one of them. And the blue walk I taught with many, many times. Uh, the and they, the blue walk. So they do, it's well, they do European and they okay. do walking trips. And then they also have guest artists. So okay. with them, I've taught in Lake Como twice. I've taught in England. I've taught in the French Riviera three times. Um, the blue walk. Okay. Yes. Highly recommended. So they, and so they, and all the others, but especially them do all the logistics. They do the registration. They pick out the hotels. They plan the itinerary. I say, yeah, no, I want to do this. I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, they plan where we're going to dinner. Um, and they're a total bunch of fun. Wow. So it's really great. So when I say that, yeah, so they handle the registration and then I do the marketing and get the people there. So it's been a great, great thing. Wow. So how do you think that um, this teaching and travel has influenced your artwork? Do you mm. see like a change over time or? Oh, good question. Yeah. What? Yeah. Um, it's very different. As you can imagine, sitting in your studio with um a pine cone propped up drawing it right. versus sitting on a park no how or sitting well sitting on a park bench in the wind and you're drawing something well you're, you're teaching 14 people to draw something <laughs> that you've never drawn before yeah <laughs> and right. it's starting to rain and <laughs> you know or teaching in a church and you're like shh be quiet okay i'll do this <laughs> um oh, so of that <laughs> yeah because every, all of my trips are teaching on location, literally on the fly, you know, huh. like, so sometimes I've been to the place before, like I mentioned, you know, the French Riviera. So I know where I want to go on the second trip. Right. But so it's taught me huge flexibility, working on the fly, learning yeah. how to teach, um, you know, to a group in a situation and, and then as for my art, it's given, mm. I'm sure, a freshness to it, you know, in an well, That's kind of spontaneity of having yeah. to kind of think on the fly. And Absolutely. In, yeah. So almost, mm. that's interesting because we were talking before we pressed record or we went live and, you know, you were saying, oh, I never teach live I online. I only teach pre-recorded, but that's a similar experience, having to think on the fly as you teaching these retreats, really. You yeah, know. absolutely. Like we'll plan, you know, one day we were going to go one place, we we're going to this cemetery. And so I thought, okay, we're going to use a water soluble pen and we're going to do this. And then the traffic was too bad. So whoop, switch, we're going to the park now. Yeah. Uh, daily, those kinds of, we're yeah. going to draw something different and how am I going to approach it and what tools right. am I going to use? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow. That's great. But I mean, I imagine at first that was really uncomfortable, but I bet you kind of got into that. Rhythm. Yeah, I think it's certainly it's it's certainly a personality trait that I'm okay with. You know, I'm I'm much more spontaneous than I am. Okay, I'm going to write a speech and practice ten times. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, so it works for my personality. That, yeah. That's for sure. But yeah. I do remember the stress of that first retreat in Orvieto, getting up early and walking the streets, going, "Okay, where are we going to sit? Where are we going to draw?" Know, right? you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my good. That's really that. That's kind of fascinating to me. And do you think it's affected? You say that you think it's affected your artwork. Like, what were you teaching initially um, for your first Italian retreat, and then how? You know, the last one was a couple of years ago, I think. Like, has that changed at all? Like, what you were teaching, or? Um. Well, initially, so I, I on, on all of those travel retreats, I'm doing sketching in watercolor. Yeah. So initially we were, you know, we're, what's changed is the presentation. So it went from, from five by seven cards. And then we made a couple of times I made books out of those watercolor cards, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's become more bookmaking oriented. And also more mixed media oriented. Like example, um, I taught. I'm teaching in Santa Fe um, next year, 
Mm -hmm. And so it's a combination of in studio, making the book and doing mixed media. But we also are going out all over the place and drawing on location in museums and museums and old churches and stuff. So uh, it's, it's changed a little bit in that way, but not that much, really. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So talk to me, um, well, talking of change, talk to me a little bit about the transition to online, because you've actually been teaching online for quite a few years. This is not a new thing for you. Um, How did that come about? And and like, how does it differ for you? Well, I mean, how does it differ for you, do you think, of the student, like the online and in person? And I'm kind of curious how that sort of all came about. Uh, I first, I think I first started teaching in 2010 online with joggles actually really and oh. yep and they and that was <laughs> god i sound like i'm ancient before video <laughs> <laughs> so for people who don't know joggles it's like a it's like an online um they set this up it's a retail store right yes oh. yes and then they would have classes and you'd have your list of materials that you could buy from them yeah 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 and so the the software at that time of course was very different than now so my classes were all written which that my technical illustration background so you know you have the picture and then you have the text and then here's the next step picture so they were all pdfs like that yeah yeah and then so no no video at all and the students would post their work and then i went started doing my own classes on the platform of Rizuku, and yeah. those are a combination of um, handouts and pre-recorded videos. Yeah. And um, the people always, you know, you have a kind of an aversion, natural aversion to that kind of community because you're like, how am I going to get to know anybody? You know, right. we're not talking face to face, but oh, my students are just similar to yours. They're so wonderful and supportive of each other because you they post their work and then everybody comments on it. Right. And, yeah. and, and you see the students work yeah. and then you see your own work compared to theirs and the assignment. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. In fact, a lot of my trips have filled from my online students because they feel, of course, that they know me and vice versa. So it's been, again, a, kind of a circular thing that's worked out beautifully. Wow. That's amazing. Huh. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, talking of, you know, online and teaching in person, um, clearly the, uh, the pandemic is oh, yeah, <laughs> the elephant that. in the room. Like, <laughs> talk to me a little bit about um, how it's, I mean, clearly you've been home like the rest of us for the best part of a year. Um, mm-hmm. how, how has it affected your creativity? Have you found you've been less creative, more creative? Like, could you kind of speak to that a little bit? Um, I've, I've been more personally creative. I've I'm, I'm always been creative. Yes, yeah, sure. And prior to this, I think a lot of it was put into preparing for trips or classes. Mm-hmm. So I'd go into my studio and I would work and I would make art that I loved. But also in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to teach this, it'll do, da, 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 you know. <laughs> so, but with the pandemic, I've pretty much gone into my studio every afternoon and sat down and put on a British murder mystery, whatever the series is I'm watching. Um, (laughs) Midsummer Murders, Vera. (laughs) Midsummer Murder, there's 20, was it 26 seasons now? Yeah, so that was great. The long, the more seasons, the better. (laughs) Right, yeah, because Vera, there's only eight or something like that. Oh no, break my heart. That means I'm almost done. Uh, so I put on that and I would just literally, I would walk from the main, the main house. Yes. My <laughs> massive estate from the main yeah, house, cool. <laughs> grab something interesting, take it into my studio, put it in front of me and start drawing it. And like, so like all what? that, like what kind of things would you grab? Like I did a whole book of succulents, um, flowers, coffee cups. I'm really more and more, um, I really like drawing nature and I just let myself go with that, you know, so I'll go out in the yard and, and yeah. um, pick something yeah. and just sit down and, and draw it. So having that concentrated time has really helped. It's really helped develop my art and more mixed media and more layers and more approaches because yeah. you have time to just play. Yeah. So that's what the pandemic has given you more time to play. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's really, and I think my art has really grown and people that know me can see it in my work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. How yeah. do you think you'll, will you structure your life differently now that, hmm. well, when the pandemic's over, like, do you plan to add Oops. another <laughs> Oh dear, hello. <laughs> Do you plan to um, increase your travel again? Or do you feel like you want to keep this kind of routine that you have now? Hello. <laughs> um, I know that, oh, wait, we don't want him turning anything off. Buddy, get out of here. <laughs> um, I, you know, I've got some trips planned for next year, teaching trips, um, Santa Fe and Tucson. Yeah. I know I won't be traveling as much. Um, Mm. my husband was in a terrible car accident two years and two years ago and right. he can no longer drive which means okay um, a number of things and it also means he, well he, he also has trouble walking so yeah tr trips to Europe and trudging around are just unfortunately yeah um, not going to happen right so yeah places in the U.S. Uh, so mm. I'm you know I'm I'm limited I love to teach it's like I don't want to give it up, but like our financial planner says, you know, you mm. can retire. <laughs> like, oh, well, I yeah. know. <laughs> That's overrated. You know, but I, yeah, you know, so I, I, I'm doing a lot less. I know that. And yeah. um, I want us to do, um, you know, local trip. Well, with a group of friends, we're going to Savannah the, in May this year. Ooh, nice. And um, so local things that are easy on my husband and, you know, fill yeah. my need to travel. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it, it was um, interesting you saying uh, before um, we came onto Facebook um, that, you know, Don's accident kind of prepared you a little bit for the pandemic. Do you think it's kind of interesting that, you know, you had some enforced time at home and you got like a taste for it, so. Yeah, 12 weeks at home. And, you know, yeah. how do you, besides, I was, you know, besides being sad, but it was like, okay, work in the garden, read a lot of books. I think during that time is when I joined three book clubs, <laughs> <laughs> which I never had time before. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah, we had food delivered, um, you know, so we, I really did. We learned how to cope by staying home. So it was like your, yeah. your COVID practice. Mm. It was. In yeah. in retrospect, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about, because um, your work, you talk about like the drawing. I, I want to go all the way back now. Let's, we've come okay. to the present. Now we're going to go all the way back. You talk to me about like the drawing, um, because I know that's something that you feel pretty strongly about. You know, you said initially when you, um, went back to school, you did fine art, but you're like, oh, that's really not for me. You did graphic design. And you always had this idea that, you no, know, you couldn't draw. Like, where do you think that came from? I, I use the example that I always thought an art, well, well, we all knew artists in the fourth or fifth grade and the yeah. teacher would pick them to do the illustrations for the bulletin board. You know, oh. they were just gifted and natural at it. I remember okay. my friend Colleen Vicka was that way. <laughs> and, Hi, Colleen. Uh, so, watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so I had this, I thought, well, clearly Colleen was born with it. I mean, there are people that are just born with it or they're developed younger than I. Um, so I thought that an artist was someone who could draw a chair without looking at it. I thought an artist oh. didn't have to look at what they were drawing. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. It and just then, came from within, like their head. Oh. Yeah. Well, I also used to think that I knew we lived on the earth, but I thought we lived on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> <But> <laughs> 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 so it was one of those ideas. <laughs> sure. That's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So Dr. Manning. No. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so... Um, I, and then even, as I said, in my school assignments, I could draw, but I guess, I, I don't know. It, it, it was, it was, it has to be a personal in, inside recognition. Yeah. Um, I remember when I got my business card and I had, I wrote artist, it had artist on the bottom of it. You know, it was like, yeah. okay, I'm stepping into it. Right. And I have people all the time in my online classes say, or before they've signed up, oh, I can't draw a straight line. Right. Well, it's just that they've never 
focused on it, never sat there and really looked at something and realized that you don't just, another example, you don't just take your pencil or pen yeah. and um, start drawing one single line and then you have this perfect sketch. Right. You start out by sketching loosely, finding the shape, figuring it out. Yeah. Um, it's not that you go right to it. So I think people don't realize that. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So really, you, yeah. anyone can draw. I really saying. believe it. Yeah. I really believe it. And I see it all the time, all the time in my students and yeah. even, and little kids, you know, I started out teaching kids yeah. and um, well, my, my huge mentor with my sketchbooks is Danny Gregory. Yes. Yes. So I've known uh, and met Danny back in 2006 uh -huh. and he, he changed my work in that he always draws from real life. And so mm -hmm. Again, the perfect segue into drawing and traveling, you know, right. you're going to draw from real life and photos yeah. and working in a sketchbook. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that was life changing for me. Yeah. I have several of his books, actually. And um, yeah. he's, he's it. And we, we probably don't need to go into him, but he has a really interesting story, too, of how he came to. Oh, yes. Drawing, like with his wife and everything. So. Yes. Anyway. And that's how we connected on his blog is oh, my experience with my husband and and his experience, oh, and I know what I was going to say. So I used so I used to teach in the schools and I had to base the teaching as a visiting artist and I had to base it on a master artist. That was the criteria. Okay. So one day I, t I based it on, I think it was Leonardo da Vinci and Danny Gregory. <laughs> and I showed the kids pictures of both. Mm -hmm. And then I had them bring something from home that they really cared about draw it and journal about it. And oh my God, that was just life-changing for the kids. These are fourth graders, you know? Yeah. Wow. And drawing something they love and taking their time. And yeah. um, so I sent the pictures to Danny and he put them on his blog and that started our friendship. Oh, that's really interesting. So for people who don't know, Jan Danny Gregory is a British um, artist and he ha he runs um, something called Sketchbook School, right? Yeah, he's actually not British, he's international. I oh, mean, he's, he? he's, oh, I thought yeah, he was, he's he got from the UK. I don't, I don't. No, I think he, I, he spent a lot of time in Pakistan and oh, all really? over. No, he's an American accent anyway. <laughs> oh, really? Why did I think he was? Yeah, he was a New Yorker. I describe him as a New Yorker, even though now he lives in Arizona. Huh? Yeah. Well, well, I apologize. Anyway, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, great guy. He's changed a lot of lives. Really? Yes. <laughs> yes, he really has. So um, yeah. you, if you would like to check him out, it's Sketchbook School. And I believe it's S, school is spelled S-K-O-O-L, right? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it spells it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yes. Yeah. Talking, you know, was the, yeah. Talking of schools and teaching, um, I know yes. that you have a, um, you have some classes coming up. And um, <laughs> but, but prior to, well, would you like to talk, because we have a little video to show folks of one of yes. your um, pandemic journals, um, as they were, because you've, like you say, you've been pretty prolific during the pandemic, um, sort of, um, draw, you know, drawing every afternoon from just things you've plucked from. Yes. <laughs> Even from Trader Joe's, right? Sometimes you'll just say, oh, yeah, this is a Trader Joe's flower or this is. From <laughs> yeah. Well, and I had to buy this package of ice cream cones <laughs> and do a, a cutaway of what was in the ice cream cone as oh, really? an example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I know it's sacrifices we make. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, this idea that everyone can um, learn to draw and sort of talk a little bit about, um, in fact, you've got two classes. You've got two of these classes where um, you teach people this kind of concept, right? So could you just tell us, a give us a little taste of what? Yeah. Those... And actually I have, I have more than that, Ali, but the, yes. the, but the, the one class is called sketching in watercolor journal style and right. it doesn't run all the time it's scheduled so it'll probably start again maybe in june and it's for the beginners or people who want to refresh their skills um mm -hmm. but i literally teach them how to draw from the very beginning and paint mm -hmm. with watercolor yes and then i have a couple other classes that are spin-offs from that that incorporate more mixed media or different drawing styles or different page sizes mm -hmm. um, and then my newest class is Make and Fill Your Own Mixed Media Journal. Very clever title, but it says it all. <laughs> and, no, <that's> fine. 
And it's um, it's based on my pandemic journals, if you want to call them that. It's making your own book and then all kind of million ideas on how to fill them. Really? All right. Well, why don't we segue into looking at one of your pandemic journals? And yes. then perhaps um, we could talk a little bit more about that because I'm kind of, sure. I, have, I have my own questions and other people might have questions too. So okay. <laughs> let's, let's um, because it's just you and me, I can't see the comments right now. If the video is playing and you can hear it, can you just give me a thumbs up so that I see, I see that it's working. So let me get that ready. Okay, here we go. You. All right, fingers crossed, folks, because you know what it's like. I see it. You see it. <laughs> All right. There we you go. Can hear it. Mm -hmm. Here's volume nine of my handmade mixed media journals. These are eco printed flowers. Volume nine since March 2020. Hyacinth with, yes, a brownie watercolor painting badge. <laughs> I taught a group of brownies. Another eco print. A quote from Hannah Hinchman about the value of art journaling. This is uh, some laminated flowers as a see-through page onto the next. The stages of amaryllis. A Christmas cactus that I soon found out was a Thanksgiving cactus. Some little amaryllises tucked in that envelope. Some bees. More amaryllis. And more amaryllis. <laughs> a little stitch page. Hand stitched. It's a kind of shibori paper and glued it in there. Release. These are eco prints, not by me, but uh, as collage for my book. Succulent. Eggplant. I particularly like this page. Chrysanthemum. Another eco print with some drawings on it. Flowers, uh, another laminated see through page. That's a video. Two, uh, <laughs> this was a little book of pomegranate drawings. No, I'll tuck that in later. Envelope from a friend, flowers, chrysanthemum, tag. And the last back page.
Nice. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. (laughs) Oh, thank you. You had lots of lovely comments, by the way. Oh, um, Doris says she loves the spaciousness of your work. Isn't that interesting? Oh, that is interesting. That's lovely. And um, someone else said something. Um, Tony said as well. Um, where is it? It was thought it was an interesting comment. Now I can't find it. Um, she loves the freshness of your work. It's not overworked or muddy. Like less Mm. is more. I think that's true, right? Mm -hmm. There is a real sort of like openness about your work. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. And watercolor is something, the majority of that is watercolor, is something that can easily be overworked and and, um, especially beginners struggle with that. And you do, you just have to walk away. (laughs) (laughs) That's good to know. (laughs) Yeah. Nice. So um, this class, Make and Fill Your Own Mixed Media Journal, that's basically what you'll be doing in this class, right? Similar to that. Yeah. In fact, so here's. (laughs) Oh my gosh, they're your pandemic journals, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple more sitting right here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a, kind of everything I learned uh, working in my studio. Okay. Um, yes, tons of ideas. Nice. Okay, well, now what date? Because I'm going to take it for without doubt. All right. Because I took your first one like years ago. <laughs> so oh, um, you're prepared for this one. Um, and I should say, I mean, you're totally prepared, Ali, because it is an intermediate level class. Okay. Um, that, I think that's important to note. So if people are going to start out, they should start with the sketching and watercolor, which will probably be like in June. And again, I should have a date for this. Um, the mixed media one coming soon, I would say. It's coming soon. Because um, I just ran it for a group of my alumni. Gotcha. And which is such a good thing to do. Yeah. And so... <laughs> And I knew just, you know, kind of behind the scenes, I knew that in creating this class, I was just throwing everything at it because there was so much. And I really got some good feedback about how to organize it better and make it uh, clearer in terms of the instructional part. Yeah. Um, So I'm doing some work on that, adding a couple of videos. So it should probably be ready, you know, in like a month or two. Okay. But you would suggest that if people are beginners, they take the, um, the first one. Um, yes. the sketch and watercolor style, which will be in June. But I will make sure. Absolutely. Um, Mickey, well, in the description of this video, folks, which is above us, um, there are links to all of where you can find Jane. And um, I would say the best thing I would say is sign up for her newsletter so that you yeah, are, thank you. Are, you know, informed of when these classes go live. But I, I'll make sure they um, are posted um, on the Facebook Thanks. and everything as Thanks, well. Thanks, Ellie. Um, yeah, the newsletter is the way to go. I send them out about once a month with pictures of my journals and inspiration and any uh, classes I'm, you know, that yeah. are coming up. Yeah, yeah. Signing up for the newsletter is probably the best way to make sure you definitely get into this class. Can I just ask you a couple more quick questions and then we'll take questions from folks. So if you have a question for Jane, please pop it in the comments. I'm happy to um, pass them along. Um, but I have to, I have a personal question about, you know, the mixed media elements that you um you put into your journals are they literally what's on your desk or do you through very carefully like and source things like how does that work for you personally <laughs> well i know that you have a vintage suitcase full of vintage papers <laughs> yeah, i do <laughs> um uh, during this period the pandemic period it has been things that have come up like there's a lot of tea bag uh, things or um, in my other books, you know, wrappers from said ice cream cones or uh, <laughs> uh, so kind of daily life stuff. I do also have um, just one box of um, what I call my collage papers that have uh, envelopes and letters and, you know, just strips and pieces and stuff. And I might go through there sometimes uh, for a color. Gotcha. You have one um, box? Just one box? Yeah. Yeah. I'm impressed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and if it gets too full, which is nearing, um, I throw stuff out. That's yeah, yeah. Same with my fabric. I just have two drawers of fabric. Um, my uh, in both those cases, you know how you see quilt artists and their fabrics all arranged by color. Yeah. My personal process is they're all jumbled in there together, and I just pull out what attracts me. Interesting. Um, huh. And it's the same with my collage papers you know and I've been using you know paint chips from the hardware store and yeah um, yeah it's really random sometimes indeed it is just sitting there on my desk (laughs) right but I like the idea that they're bits of daily life as well 
Mm. But I yes, find it fascinating much. that I wonder if your work has a more openness and lightness because you actually have less stuff. Like just having mm. two drawers of fabric and one box of collage, I think is quite unusual. <sighs> For people in our space I think generally we're surrounded by a lot of stuff which is overwhelming mm -hmm. and you don't kind of know where to start so I just wonder you know yeah that intentional yeah that's an part? pardon is that intentional on your part to have yes less stuff? yeah yeah oh yeah absolutely absolutely all right yeah I'll and I have you know I have like any artist or not should, many artists you know I have a lot of mediums like you know colored pencils and pastels and this that and the other um, mm. <laughs> maybe it's just laziness because I sit at my desk and it's like, oh, I turn around. Here's my papers. Oh, oh, these pencils are here. I think I'll use those. <laughs> <laughs> um, funny. Yeah, no, I would say it's intentional because, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I hadn't really thought of it, but it is intentional. All right. I think I need some of that intentionality in my stuff. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a couple questions, if you don't mind, we have just a couple more minutes. Um, Michelle asks, she loves Jane's, and I don't know how to pronounce this, is it Milagros, Milagros? How do you? Milagros. Oh, Milagros. yeah, yeah. How did, how did you start doing those, says Michelle? So that's one of my online classes, and mm -hmm. um, I called it Milagros, um, which is a Latin American term for actually small silver charms that if you have a wish or a need, you pick out the charm associated with that, a heart, a, an arm, a leg, eyes. Huh. Um, and frequently they're pinned in churches. So I have a, a collection of those and I just love the whole concept. So for my class, I chose a heart shaped pattern called a Milagro yeah. and it's um, hand stitched and felt. So yeah. I started just stitching other things with felt and just kept really was drawn to that heart shape, yeah. Um, you know, because you can beat it and add sequins and embellish it. Um, so yeah, I developed it from starting with other shapes and then went, yeah, zeroed it did on that one. Nice. Yeah, no, they are really attractive actually. Um, I have a question from Pat. She says she loves the pressed flowers in your journals. How do you prepare them so they retain their colors? You know, uh, no expert. Just uh, put them between the pages of a book try to be patient. Um, I bought a laminator, um, you know, so that's what uh, you saw in, in this book. They're like laminated. The plastic, like from the office supply store? Uh, Amazon, of course. <laughs> well, of course, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so that's how I do it. Yeah, no, no magic really, but they okay. have kept their color beautifully. Yeah. Um, a question from Sharon, is there a name for the type of binding you used um, in the book in the video? Not as far as I know. Okay. All right. And what is your favorite type of binding, by the way? Or do you not have one? That's my question. <laughs> I go through phases. So this this binding that I'm doing these have been doing these books with for, for the last year, which I teach in that class we discussed, yep. is so easy and flexible. And it's just, you know, it's just worked so perfectly. This is a very um, a good size for me. Yeah. What size is so, it? Five by seven? Approximately, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it can be as many or as few pages as you want, so it's super flexible. But my other favorite, oh, do I have it here? I don't think I do. My new favorite is the slip knot binding. Yes, I've noticed you're using that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I've I've done a couple I've done a couple books with that, and I, um, I like the ability to prepare the pages all at once. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I just like the way it looks. Yeah. So right now it's a slip knot. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really, we need to, I need to, um, pop yes, you do because every time I post something, people are like, how do you do it? I know. right? <laughs> and I, I, I can do it, but I can't teach it. So it's uh, all yours, Allie. <laughs> yeah. That's my bag. Um, a question for Luann, which I think I can answer. Um, where are Jane's videos available? They're all on YouTube, right? Your videos. Yeah. yeah. yeah I have a YouTube channel. Yeah, okay. And I think Mickey posted it because there's anyway, I have a YouTube channel with a bunch of videos and then there's a section specifically of these journals. Yeah. And I think Mickey and it's just Jane it. Lafazio. It's popped in the comments yeah. for because Mickey yeah. on the ball. All right. I'm just. Yes. Um, Ruth says, is there a, have I done the slip knot binding in the book club yet? Not yet, but I will. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is it for questions. Unless okay. anyone come in. 
thank you, Jane. This oh, been, I've welcome. learned so much about you that I didn't know. So, and I have, I like, I have a page of notes. <laughs> <laughs> well we didn't we didn't cover when i was a contestant on hollywood squares but we'll save that for next time <laughs> exactly if you didn't know jane was a contestant on hollywood squares what year was that or 1988 you know and i won 1500 dollars in cash and a car you won a what year was that 1988 i won a car from joan rivers are you serious <laughs> I'm totally serious. That's why it was such a big deal. <laughs> yeah. <a> big deal. <laughs> yeah. But we'll save that for another day. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Just thank you for inspiring us to um, think about ways to fill up our sketchbooks because I think, as you said, we're all busy making these books, but we don't seem to, we don't always fill our books. So um, you've given us some food for thought for ways to um, fill up our sketchbooks so thank you good thank you ali for having me it was really fun really enjoyed talking to you and thank well, you for having me do it more often um <laughs> look um make sure you check out jane's links to her website her youtube make sure you sign up for her newsletter so that you find out when um the class is going live and um i will also keep you informed of that too and um Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank Give you. our best to Don and I shall say hi to Andy, even though I've never met him either. <laughs> oh, well, yes, he's, yes, he's here. He's listening in. <laughs> so, <laughs> and um, we look forward to seeing um, many more of your fabulous journals. So please don't stop creating. And um, hopefully you. we will um, all meet at some point. We should have a book club meet up and have you as our oh, guest. We... Star. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, we, I think having that book, a book club meetup when we can all travel is a brilliant idea. Yeah. yeah. We can come to San yeah. Diego or we can just, we can, we can pick somewhere. Different. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? We have <laughs> options, right? We one day will have options. <laughs> yes. We have options. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, have a wonderful day, Jane. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Allie. All right. Take care. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.